5,350 pounds, a Coleman 24 foot bunkhouse with dinette slide just landed here at Haylet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. Um, this RV is probably more familiar to you than you realize. Coleman is what's called a private label, uh, which is uh, an attempt at an exclusive brand. Uh, this RV is absolutely the same as a Dutchman Aspen Trail under a different name, just to help people draw a parallel between the two. It's sort of like the difference between a Chevy and a GMC, except even less different. The only real difference here is just the decals. Um, this RV is in great shape. It's late model. It's been used very little. Uh, the folks came to us from a long way away and swapped this out. After kind of dipping their toes in the water to see what they liked, they swapped up to an Eagle HT travel trailer, and they're, they're seriously moving on up. Pardon a little bit of the clutter. This camper is actually coming to us from Colorado. We uh, really do bring people in a long way. So things like you see this, uh, you know, King and uh, satellite antenna system right here and all the stuff back there in the bunks. That's not included with this camper. We'll have those out of there momentarily. But when the camper first pulled in, I thought, wait a minute, I got a good shot here to get some footage of this with the slide closed to see how travel friendly it is. Now at a glance, you look at the countertop, you look at the table, you go, ah, crap, I can't get through there. Well. It's not the end of the world because you could either do a little bit of the old butt scoot boogie and scoot around the dinette and voila, drop yourself over there next to the refrigerator, get to all your storage. Or you could travel with that table in the down position, which frankly is advisable anyway, just in case that table wiggles loose in this crazy rolling earthquake with hurricane force winds outside. Or you could travel with the table in an alternate position, such as under the bed mattress, which makes it very easy to step through there and get to everything. So I don't know that I'd give it an A+, plus, but maybe an A- minus for travel accessibility. Now she's late model, she's clean. It's certainly entry level, but it does what it needs to do. Not everybody needs a Four Seasons full-time living fifth wheel. There's a lot of people out there who have a big SUV or a half ton or whatever, who are either trying to start camping or they're upgrading to a slide out or getting away from the old family pop-up that, you know, they spend most of their time outside. They don't spend all their time indoors in the RV. That's who this is for, you know. It has just enough of everything. It never does too much of anything. Like, you'll find that the lighting in here is very minimal, but it's enough. Like, it's fine, you know. It, there's enough lighting going on in here. There's one light in the slide out, but it's enough. And that's what this brand is right here. This is a brand that does enough. Um, the uh, countertop here in the kitchen, that is a sealed edge press membrane, which is a pretty common popular material. One other detail I've noticed in the kitchen that doesn't seem to match anything is the rear and the side splash tiles here in the kitchen. I believe those were aftermarket additions on behalf of the previous owner because that does not look like factory work right there. It doesn't look bad. It just doesn't look like a factory component. Um, we do have central air in the ceiling. We have central heat in the floor. This is not made to be some super duper heavy extended season camper. It's just a normal RV. Um, storage below the dinette. Only one side has a door to get to that storage, so you will have to mostly lift up the dinette base to get there. But frankly, in an entry level camper, that's pretty common stock. Now, one thing they did very different here is most travel trailers with this floor plan have a pantry in this location, but usually it's not located within the slide out. You can see how they extended the slide like an extra foot here, which offers all of this exact same storage space you'd find in like the Jayco or the whatever else version of this floor plan, but it gets it off the floor plan. So it makes this whole corner look and feel bigger because the slide extends out further. So, you know, kind of nice. The bunks are simple, but effective, you know, what, what more do you need? Again, this is a camper where the purpose of this camper is to get in, to sleep, have a meal, maybe play a game of cards on a rainy day and be done. Kind of like the bathroom. It's simple, but effective. I do like the counter space in here. And I do like that it has a full medicine cabinet, not just a mirror glued against the wall. Now you'll find that it's very simple and basic. It doesn't have a shower surround. It doesn't have a skylight, but it is six foot nine tall inside, so even without that skylight, even stepping into the tub, a tall guy like me can still fit in here. Now, it's close, but I can fit. So, you know, it counts. But everything kind of depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for a shower surround, if you're looking for a skylight, take a look at our J-Flight 242 BHS. It's basically the exact same layout. Oh, I just noticed, I like that USB plug up here for the kiddos on a rainy day. Nice touch. 
Being a little bit taller, they did have room for a little bit bigger storage pocket above that refrigerator. Now the uh, cabinetry here, you can see how the cabinetry is both sunken back and shrunken upwards as compared to the microwave cavity. So that has been reduced a little bit, but it also makes the RV look and feel bigger. So everything's a push and a pull. You've got one set of outlets right there in the kitchen where they're easy to access versus two. Again, it's enough. That's the whole point of this camp, right? I just can't say it enough. Um, the uh, entertainment system in this would be simple. It's just a Bluetooth DVD player. The previous owners had installed their own TV. This did not come with one from the factory. Um, what's nice, though, is they were kind enough to leave behind the hardware for it. So if you add your own TV, you don't have to try to figure out how to hook it up. You just, uh, you know, screw these brackets to your television and then hang them off that mount. It's a quick release, on-off, lickety-split kind of job. And at the top of the entertainment center, I like that little radius beam right there. Just give it some looks. Now, your big slide window does open for airflow. Your slide side window does not. But it is there, so it does still look and feel a little bit larger. Your bedroom, like the rest of the RV, is simple but effective. Couple curtains for privacy if you're so inclined. Cross breeze windows. You can see how you've got your handy bedside stands with a drawer there at each side, which is nice. So very CPAP phone charger friendly. If you wanted to throw a TV in the bedroom, it looks like your hookups are over here on the side. So maybe a swing arm mount TV would be ideal. You do have dual hanging closets and then you've got that overhead shelf for a little bonus storage where you can set some things when you get there. Previous owners had also, it looks like, uh, I, this looks to me like maybe some Home Depot level bathroom hardware that they kind of repurposed into something of a bonus bedroom shelf, but it works. Just like the beginning of the video, you can see that power awning hanging out there. There is LED lighting below it. Uh, this does have a power tongue jack, so setting and breaking camp is very simple and easy here. Uh, this is a very conventional uh, RV in almost every sense of the word. It's a good starter basic entry level camper, kind of like these folks did. If you want to get a camper that's not terribly expensive to get yourself started to find out what you like, what you dislike about camping, and then swap into the one you intend to keep longer, that's really what these are for, you know. Basic 20 pound propane tanks, fine, you know, not 30s. This doesn't have any sort of weather package. It's, it's not some heated enclosed belly. There's no Arctic, nothing going on. Um, I do like how most of the windows will open for airflow. The slide side windows do not open for airflow. That's mostly just a, a cost factor that's a signature of that. Now you notice there's no window here, but if you remember the inside of the RV, there was a closet built into the slide right there. So it's not that they cut the corners, that a uh, window right there wouldn't do uh, any good. I do like how uh, above the bedroom, or pardon me, bathroom, you can see that black Max Air vent cover sticking up there to help shield it from potential weather exposure. Back here uh, on the uh, rear bumper area, you do have a full outside utility shower, which is just a darn handy thing. As a person who camps myself, I can tell you, uh, like the camper I tend to use most of the time doesn't have that. And it's, it's annoying because I have to get a Y splitter off of my water hookup. And that works, but it's cold only. And that uh, having that outside shower actually hooked to your water heater is a darn, darn nice thing. This is backup camera ready. So if you're looking for a rear view uh, you know, in motion or just rear parking camera, you can do uh, both ways here. This is very similar uh, to the J-Flight 242 BHS that we would carry here at Haywood RV of Coldwater, Michigan. Another very popular starter, simple, bunkhouse family camper miniature very simple outside kitchenette i do like how it telescopes out to you and i do like this chunk of counter space here i also like how there's nothing in the way to block you from getting to this little storage pocket up here another nice touch is that power outlet over here in the corner so you can you know run some little uh like appliances or whatnot and of course we got dad's medicine cabinet over there so between the inside and outside refrigerators you do have about eight cubic foot of cold storage on this camper you can walk on the roof it simply does not include a ladder again kind of a symptom of being more of an entry-level style of rv power awning worked like a charm slide worked like a charm this does have an auto rain dump feature it does have a manual tilt and lock feature um i think i mentioned earlier but there are led lights under it i haven't looked at the tires but i don't suspect any problems there because this thing is just so darn late model yep uh 15 inch load range d radials Nothing flashy, nothing fancy. They're appropriate for the size of the RV. There's a lot of people, you know, like, Jayco still puts Goodyear Endurance radials on their entry-level campers like this, which is really cool. But 
there's nothing necessarily wrong with these tires. It's kind of the difference between good and better. One more quick note is right up front next to that uh, big baggage door, this does have a uh, side mount solar prep plug. So if you do want to keep your batteries topped off, pick up one of those portable solar panels from our Halid RV Parts and Service Center. You can do that, keep your cells charged off, uh, or <laughs> topped off, charged up, running a little bit longer between, uh, you know, plug-ins effectively. So, there you have it guys, pretty open and shut case. It's a, uh, you know, <laughs> great example of a well-kept used RV for someone who's not looking for the new RV price tag. So take care, stay safe, have fun, happy camping everyone. Get you swapped out of a pop-up or upgrade yourselves to a slide out here without breaking the bank.